You feel the effects of the agent? Everything's moving. They had no idea what the drug was going to do to us. They just moved the monkey out of the way and put me in there behind him. They hammered it into us. You cannot tell anybody about what you saw or what you went through, including your family. This is Cold War, and that's when I was assigned. Cold War was at its height. The mission at Edgewood was to find a drug that would produce incapacitation to decrease the enemy's ability to perform without killing him. Where are you, David? You know where you are? Can you say anything, David? Ketchum didn't believe anyone got hurt. He went to his deathbed saying the same thing. Yep. That it was a lie. I have hallucinations almost every night. Feel it. Reaper, Reaper, Reaper! And it's gone on since Edgewood. The excerpts you have seen were intended to demonstrate. I've got regrets about a number of things I've done. That would not apply to the work I did at Edgewood. I thought I did a pretty good job with that. participants received the incapacitating agent by inhalation. A low dose of agent was fed into the mixing bowl. This is a story of one of the darkest and most bizarre chapters of recent history. Borderline hallucinations will come late in the experiment. One that the US government and military would rather not be told. For two decades, secret human experiments were performed on our own soldiers with the goal to weaponize mind-altering drugs. But what's most shocking is that the soldiers involved in these experiments believe the military is covering up what really happened at Edgewood Arsenal. The whole thing is just so criminal. So criminal that they did to their own soldiers that somebody needs to be held accountable. As an investigative journalist and a former White House correspondent, I have seen corruption and cover-ups at the highest levels. And I've always tried to bring accountability to our government through my reporting. To see just how deep the rabbit hole goes, I've assembled a team, including fellow investigative journalist Jasper Craven and Lorraine Boissonnol, government archival researchers Kai Baylor and Rick Ramirez and chemical warfare historian, Reed Kirby. Our investigation will take a 360 degree approach. We'll trace the 20 year timeline of the Edgewood experiments through one's highly classified documents and films. Experiencing hallucinations for a and take a deep dive into the human trials of these potent chemical agents through the first hand accounts from the test subjects themselves. No one. And I mean no one <laughs> have I ever talked to about this. But the key that may Sorry. unlock Edgewood's most closely guarded secrets comes from the mastermind of the program itself, Dr. James Ketchum. Through an exclusive, never-before-seen interview recorded just before his death, we'll piece together what really happened at Edgewood and pressure test the soldier's claim that it wasn't just the army who was experimenting on them, that darker forces were at play, which the government has been covering up for decades. At least eight Nazi scientists were at Edgewood. These were Hitler's favorite chemists in Nazi Germany. And the CIA was involved. They were actually used to experiment on us, trying to brainwash people, which the CIA was interested in but all the records were destroyed, and who knows whether they're still doing it or not. You, you don't condone that, do you? Destruction of records? Yes. Not generally. You may have heard of Edgewood, 
but you've never heard the story like this. Edgewood Arsenal has been America's research center for chemical warfare for over a century. Here, scientists developed, manufactured, and tested some of the most lethal chemical agents the world has ever known. But after World War II, Edgewood Arsenal began research into new types of non-lethal agents. Around 1951, the Army Chemical Center at Edgewood had a crash program to develop an incapacitating psychochemical that would have temporary paralysis without killing an enemy soldier. But at the same time, there was a revolution in pharmacology for treating psychiatric disorders. Because of that, the Army Chemical Center got involved and seeing if the ill effects of those drugs, the side effects that make pharmaceuticals unsuitable, might make them useful as a weapon. In the search for incapacitating agents, the chemical warfare laboratories are investigating a great many chemical compounds. There's something in here. They're looking at a survey of different compounds, so things that produce anxiety, hallucinations, and psychoses. Correct. So they tested as many different chemicals as they could with animals to see which ones were most effective and promising candidates. In laboratory experiments, a normal cat displays the typical hunter instinct toward a mouth. Minute quantity of lysergic acid diethylamid is administered in aerosol form. Over 250 different drugs and chemical compounds were tested at Edgewood. But the hallucinogenic effects of lysergic acid diethylamide, or LSD, showed the greatest potential in the search for an ideal incapacitating agent. The effects of the psychochemical become apparent. The cat is no longer interested in catching the mouse, and in fact appears to be afraid of it. So I'm guessing that having to test on humans is partly because you need to know what the experience is like in a human brain, and that's not really something an animal can convey. Absolutely. Like, animal testing would be the lead up to that point. And then when you have something you think is a solid candidate, then you'd want to do human testing to confirm that it would be a usable weapon. I was a young, naive soldier straight out of the tobacco fields of North Carolina. I saw flyers about going on this temporary duty project. It was for medical research volunteers. Take your seat, man. They had a program at our theater on the base, and I went to see what it was about. The guy got up and gave us a talk, said, you're going to be testing Army equipment. You know, at the other volunteer bases, testing uh, gas mask, uh, boots, or uh, clothing. And a whole bunch of good stuff on it about, you know, no KP, no guard duty, and uh, every weekend off. And I said, oh, well, that sounds really good. I said, I'll volunteer for that. I was selected. I got a letter to report to Edgewood, Maryland. When I got there, it didn't have the appearance of a military base whatsoever. I really felt good about it. I said, well, this is going to be nice. I'll be here two months. And I don't have you know, nothing to do, just go to do some testing of equipment. That was initially what we were told. We got there. They said, there's been a slight program change. On behalf of the commanding officer and his staff, we're going to have a group of you. There's no need to be alarmed at the presence of these cameras. Not test weapons. We're going to test other non-lethal combatant materials. So we said, fine, you know, we're here. We might as well do it. And they took a picture of our group. 55 of us were there for 60 days. 